From coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. What an awesome day to be alive with Jesus. Today is the day that the Lord has made for you to be blessed. You're about to hear ministry and a message from God that's going to uh, take you to another, another dimension in your life. You are going to be touched by the Holy Spirit in a very unique way. This is Pastor Rich Vera from Shekinah Fellowship here in the city of Orlando. And God has blessed us with an awesome healing ministry and if you're looking for a church, uh, we meet on the Crown Plaza Hotel at 5 p.m. You're welcome to join us. And uh, you're going to be blessed by what the Holy Spirit is doing. I want to uh, go to a song right now. Uh, Vanessa Valero is going to be singing Alabaster Box. And then you're going to hear a couple that God is using in an awesome way to minister to the people in Central Florida. We'll see you soon. God bless. Just take the time while I sing this song to praise the Lord. He is so good to us, and but for the grace of God, go you and me. He loves you regardless of where you've been. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And Jesus loves you. He loves every single part of you. Just praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She made her way to Jesus She stumbles through the tears That made her blind She felt such pain Some spoke in anger Heard folks whisper There's no room here for her kind Still on she came before his feet and though she spoke no words everything she said was heard as she poured her love for the master from her box of how the pastor I've come to pour my praise on him like a Mary's alabaster box Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair Cause you were not there the night that he found me You did not when he wrapped his love all around me Oh, you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box Jesus I can't forget the way life used to be I was a prisoner to the chains that had me bound I spent my days, poured my life 
without measure into this little treasure box I thought I'd found until one day when Jesus came to me and he healed my soul with the wonder of his touch oh but now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of I've been forgiven and that's why I love him so much I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box mm, Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears And I dry them with my hair oh, 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 Cause you were not there Oh, the night that he fell cost of the oil oh, oh, oh. you don't know the cost of my praise cause you were not there the night Jesus found me you did not the oil in my alabaster box. Thank you, Jesus. It's you that we worship, Lord. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited about our next guest. You are going to be extremely blessed, especially if you're bilingual, because the Lord has brought to the city a couple that are anointed and appointed of God, definitely to bring a change to your life and to this city. Uh, they're the pastors of Generation of Faith, Generación de Fe, for those of you that are Spanish, and uh, Pastor Gerson and Jacqueline Tirado. God bless you guys. I'm so bless happy you. to meet you officially, and God bless it's you, dear sister. God bless you. Honor. And I know God is anointed you in an awesome way. You have a message, you have a word, you have a ministry that's blessing the bilingual community. Amen. But tell me how your story, I know you, you were sharing with me, you came from Puerto Rico and you came from Georgia. Just tell me a little bit, how did you guys connect? Uh, a few years ago, uh, God spoke to our hearts, um, especially me. I was in, uh, I had a BA in science. I was, I was studying to be a pre-med student. Wow. That was my dream to go to the missions field and actually be a doctor there. And uh, God, you know, allowed me to finish my BA degree in science. And then he just told me, move to uh, Florida. Huh. I was like, okay, my family, I have no family. I have no friends. I have nobody in Florida. He says, no, I, I need you to go and move to Florida. So he opened the way to uh, Pembroke Pines, Miami area. Yeah. And uh, there I was uh, doing uh, evangelism, doing uh, outreach for youth. I mean, God just involved me in so many things. And here he comes from Puerto Rico. <laughs> and uh, how'd you guys meet in a church? In a yes. revival thing you told me, right? Best place. That's the best place to meet a spouse. You're right on that. Yes. And then from then on, uh, God just united us and uh, we, you know, we've been married. We moved from Miami to Orlando to stabilize and God just gave us a church while we're here. Awesome, awesome. Now, of course, your church is bilingual. And uh, now, why the name Generation of Faith? I mean, mm -hmm. what, what's the vision behind it? Our life, our life, it's, it's since the beginning, has been a challenge in every area. Um, when we got married, 
we actually got called on to fill meaningful ministry. So we travel over 28 states, Central, South America, huh. the whole Caribbean um, in evangelistic revivals and, and healing services and prophetic um, um, conferences. And uh, after all that, God gave us a prophetic word that we were going to pastor. At that moment, I was like, ah, I don't know about that because I'm a pastor's son my, myself. Yeah. So I, I always had the respect, you know, and, and this little bit of fear of that ministry because I saw my father go, going through so exactly. many things, you know, in, in ministry. But he told us, you will pastor. And at the end of the day, um, I, we opened up a church with my father. Then he moved to Orlando and opened up another one in Orlando. We took over the one in Kissimmee. And, and I started praying. I said, God, you know, I need, I need a name. I need a vision. I need a mission. Why you call me? Why you called us? What do you want to do with us in this city? Because I know there's many churches here. But what is really that you want to do with us? And I heard the voice of God. And he, he told me, I'm, I'm calling you to lead a generation of faith. People that are going to be miracle workers. People that are going to wa walk in the streets with a word. People that are not going to be afraid of the gospel. And they're going to share the good news with the world. And I shared with my wife, and, and, and we felt it in the spirit. And generational faith was, was born. That's awesome. It's, it's been good. It's been awesome. And I see that there's a lot of young people that are drawn to you. I mean, that's, that's a wonderful thing. When, yes. when young people are drawn to a ministry, there's a sign that's a healthy ministry going on. Amen. You know, now you came also from a family of ministers or, or you were the first one? You know, I, I, I relate a lot my life to Abraham. Okay. When he says, you know, leave your family, leave ah. your country and leave. And that's exactly what happened to me. Because when you look at my family line, none of them are pastors. None of them are ministers. And, uh, and God just chose to pick me in the monks of all my that. family. I love that. And if you look at my family history, you know, there were Christian people. They were churchgoers but never nothing in ministry. So God just picked me. I'm the, uh, I'm, you know, out of three, I'm the oldest. Yeah. So God just picked me from there. And he told me move hmm. from Augusta. I, I, I live, you know, uh, over 20 years in Augusta, Georgia. So God just told me, get out from there and I will start your ministry in Florida. And I just followed the word. I love that. I love that. And now I know that you also are uh, ministering conferences. And yes. recently you won a uh, with uh, Dr. Sheila Spencer, right? Having yeah, a conference and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yes. Well, awesome, guys. So what's the Holy Spirit putting in your heart? And then also want to hear a little bit of what's on your heart. So go ahead. For the last five years, I've been uh, traveling with my wife, and, and I've been seeing how God is just transforming and mixing things up. Uh, I've been feeling and, and hearing winds of change. I like that. Uh, I believe you, you uh, as a powerful man of God, have seen that God is changing things up, mixing things up. And, and, and actually, when you go and you, when you step into our church and you look around and you see people, African-Americans, you see uh, Caucasians, you, you see Hispanics from different cultures from the Hispanic community. I, I, I feel in my spirit that this time God is just mixing everybody. And, and, and let me share it with this example. We went into a cruise uh, about a month ago, and we needed some rest. So I'm in the cruise, and while I'm walking in the cruise, I'm seeing the, the people that work in the, in the cruise, and they had the same uniform. They had a little tag with the name. Exactly. And with the, with the country that where they're from in the bottom. So I was seeing in the same place, in the same company, people from India, from Spain, from Czechoslovakia, from Russia, hmm. from America, from Puerto Rico, from Argentina, from different countries. And I started meditating. And I said, we know that we heard before that this is how heaven is going to look like. But I believe that God is starting something here on earth. And he's mixing everybody with different talents, different gifts diverse anointings getting together to create one of the most powerful revivals in the history of the church. That's what I feel in my spirit. Hmm. I'm experiencing it now in, in, in our ministry. And every time we go into a place, we see how God is just breaking down racism. And, yeah. and, and that's, that's, we have three, three main goals in our ministry. We, we, we preach and minister against poverty, against racism, and against religion. Hmm. Those are big ones right there. Those three. 
<laughs> That's who we are, our generation of faith. Yes. And when I talk about religion, I'm not talking about true or pure religion. I'm talking about man's way of exactly. looking for God exactly. with things, with works, with different, with different dogmas that, that different times have brought into the church. I believe that God is just cleaning up the church. He's bringing up new faces, not necessarily young faces, but new faces to the earth to perform miracles, perform wonders, to do awesome things in the Lord. And, and as long as we keep ourselves humble, as long as we keep ourselves focused on Jesus and giving him all the glory, he's about to do the greatest revival that we have never seen in the earth. Right. I mean, you turn on the TV, television, you hear the news, and it's, it's bad news. It's, it's, it's breaking out everywhere. It's people with different opinions. But instead of all that, above all of that, I feel the Spirit of God saying, I'm about to start something new. Yeah. I'm about to do something powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for people that walk in faith and not by sight. I'm looking for people that are not looking for the outside skin color. I'm looking for people that know and connect in the Spirit. So that's, that's, that's what we've been preaching, that's what we've been ministering. And I know that my wife has some, 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 something on her heart exactly. also to share now with that, us. Now that's powerful. You, you mentioned the three things, the poverty, uh, religion, and um, racism. And racism, you know, and, and it's true. We just experienced a case in, our, in mm -hmm. Central Florida yes. where that was the center of things. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's powerful, that's powerful. Tell me, Jacqueline, what, what's the Lord put on your spirit? Well, in the midst of what my husband was speaking about, um, I have to speak about time of refreshing. Um, because that is one thing that the church forgets that we need in, 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 in our life. Not every season is a time of refreshing. We have to discern the seasons. We have to discern the times. So when God allows someone to take a church, a ministry, at times of refreshing, it's a time to update yourself for the new move of what God wants to do in the next season. So he says, refreshing, and, and when you go into the definition of refresh, is, it speaks about updating. It speaks about renewing. It speaks about recharging. Mm, like it that. speaks about um, getting rid of the old. Mm. You know, maybe your last season brought you so many battles that you're worn out. So you need to recharge yourself. And the only way that we can refresh ourselves is through prayer, is through presence of God. And it's because he wants to give you new tools. He wants to give you new things. And so we have to take this time of refreshing so that this powerful revival that God wants to impart in his children, impart in this time to his church, we can actually accept the things that God wants for us to learn. So in our church, we've been preaching about this, about grace, about faith, about times of refreshing, about how God wants to move in a powerful way, using the Bible with new tools, you know, and, and we have to update it going to him. Hmm. Intimacy. You know, you Lord. know, it's awesome how you share about the three points that your church is targeting, poverty, uh, religion, and racism. And then you're talking about refreshing because really, uh, in order to overcome those three things, you need the presence of the Lord, Amen. like you said, to refresh. Amen. Now, there's a scripture in Acts that says, uh, repent and be converted, that times of refreshing may come. Well, the yes. word to repent means change your course, you know, and become what you're not, yes. what you're not. And then awesome. that refreshing will come out. That's exactly Amen. what you're talking about. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Yeah, it, it's powerful because people get scared about the word repent because it's exactly. been misused. The old fashioned, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So God is saying repenting, which means change in mentality. Yeah. And when you change in your mentality, all God wants to do is reform you. The reformation, the renewing, the recharging, and all he wants to do is update. It's like a computer. You know, time and time again, you know, you see an update button, Microsoft Office or whatever else computer you have, they do updates on it on every other so season or times or every other month. Exactly. So you have to update. And then there's sometimes you have to update and then it won't let you function with what you updated if you don't restart the computer. So you have to uh. restart the computer completely for it to take into effect. Yeah. So that's what God does. <laughs> God says, I, I want you to um, feel yourself so recharged, but you need to restart yourself completely. So start all over. So the things you've learned in the last season, leave them alone. I have new things to show you. So Amen. this is where we're at in our ministry. And this is what we are in part in the churches with, that God allows us to go and to. And that's the winds of change that you're talking about. It's a reformation. Yeah, because people think that most of the time when you talk about change, they think, well, I'm, I'm leaving your church and I'm going to another church. Yeah. 
You know, but if you bring the old mentality to the best church in town, you, you are going to just remain the same. It's like the people of Israel. It took God 40 years to, to get rid of uh, the slave ment mentality exactly. that they have from Egypt. Exactly. So sometimes we get out of a situation where we try to go into the new with the old. Yeah. And God has to renew our mind every time. And, and what, what I was teaching the last two weeks, it was about this Greek word, the ortoma, which is reformation. In reality, which means is to fix, is to redo, is to rebuild, is to restore, and is to, to fix. So God is trying to renew us, restore us, fix us, align us for what? For a new life, a new beginning, a new move of God. And, and, and I, I am so happy and, and honored that God has allowed me as a second generation minister to enjoy and be a part of this new generation. I mean, this generation, we don't preach the same way. We don't look the same way. We don't walk the same way. We don't think the same way. We don't, we don't minister the same way. But yet we, we're bringing the spirit of Christ in us. That was the problem with the religious back then in Jesus' times. He came and he came with a different move. They, they used to get upset. Who is this young guy? He talks like he has authority. Who he thinks he is? But he knew who he was. He knew who his father was. He knew that the, epen, the heavens were opened and the father gave confirmation of who he was. Yeah. So he was walking with a definite uh, identity of who he was. Even when the devil challenged him, hey, convert this, 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 this stones in bread or do this or jump from here. <laughs> he was like, in our words now, dude, I don't have to prove nothing to you. <laughs> you're trying to, yeah. All right, that's you're exactly how it was. from me the kingdoms <laughs> of this world. Have you not known what Isaiah prophesied about me? That a child was born, what a son was given, and he was bringing the kingdom up in his shoulders. Mm. I'm not here to bow down to you. I'm here to take it from you. My kingdom is not from this world, and I'm bringing it here to establish it to my people. And, and when you know that you're walking in this earth and you have the kingdom of God inside of you, you know you're capable of breaking with racism, exactly. religion, and poverty. Exactly. God is good, man. God is awesome. Wow, that, that is powerful. Now, uh, the Spanish community, you know, uh, not only in the U.S., but in Latin America also, for years and years and years, they have been bound to that religious spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do you deal, because you have a bilingual church, how are you breaking the mindset of that specific community? To tell you the truth, Pastor, the only way that we have found possible to break those, those bandages is through the power of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Miracles and wonders, because this is, this is something that the church had um, um, mistaken in the past. And I'm explain myself. We used to go to church to try to see miracles, when in reality we should be miracles wonders in the streets. Mm -hmm. So miracles are for, for it's, they are for the unbelievers right. to believe that God is real. Exactly. So we have this um, situation that people convert themselves to Christ, but in reality, that what they do is that it's like they switch religions. They come and they try to find a way of doing things different but with the same mentality. Exactly. And it has to be the power of God, the Holy Spirit, the only one that can break those barriers. Of course, we preach the word, we, we pray, we fast. We're, we look young, we dress young, but we're old school seeking God. Exactly. You know, the foundation cannot be touched. Amen. You know, what, what, what we are. That, you know, that's very important to say because uh, many people think that changing and being relevant means you water down your conviction so you can win the world. Yes. So you, you still remain old school. Yes. The foundation is unshaken. Yes. So your presentation and, your, and you are you. Update yes. it. I, I, I love that. Go <laughs> ahead. I love it. We're, we're, we're old, old school updated church. You go in and you receive a word. You see a beautiful presentation with the, with the praise and worship team. God has blessed us with a powerful team. They, they're, they're energized. They, they, they know how to sing, but they know how to pray. And they know how to praise God. That's awesome. They know how to bring the presence of God to earth. They know how to open the way. 
and it says that they go to the presence of God first and then they lead the church. You cannot lead me to a place that you've never been exactly, in. Exactly. So we teach them how to sit God first and then minister to the church. Mm. So people, people walked in the church and they're already crying. By the time the preaching is coming, they're already touched. The ground is already, you know, being prepared. Exactly. We just go to sow the seed and, and boom, the Holy Spirit does the rest. I love it. What, a, what an awesome, awesome truth you, you're Amen. speaking. Now, uh, tell me about the ladies. I know you minister in conferences. You, mm -hmm. you yourself have a, a, a ministry besides the church. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you seeing God do with the ladies in Central Florida and whatever else you have, especially in Central Florida? What, what do you see? Well, God is just uh, trying to lift up a generation of, uh, of faith. And, and I say that again, because I, I don't think it's only our church. I think it's just the spirit of God moving yes. exactly. in the midst of women that sometimes have been bounded by low self-esteem, has been yeah. bounded by uh, a lot of culture, a lot of tradition. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I see a, a lot of uh, people being bounded by you know, what they would have been told, what, they, uh, uh, what they've been through, a lot of emotional stress, yeah. trauma, yeah. drama. So God has just been trying to lift up a, a generation of women that is uh, being excellent in the Lord, being driven to seek his face. I like that. You know, uh, like women that. tend to run to men to get stuff from them because they don't feel complete. But what they don't understand is that they need to run to God first. I love that. That's, that's a key because God that's exactly will complete them. Yes. God will complete them and then will bring you that person that you need to complete your destiny. And so that is what God is gearing me into. And, uh, and you see the ladies beginning to come to that revelation that, hey, it's not my men that's going to complete me. It's really the presence of the Lord. Yes, it is. And, and I see the transformations in, in, in women all through Central Florida, even Latin people that are just stuck with the mentality of religion. Exactly. And, and how they're freed by the power mm. of God and by the power of the word. I, I believe Man. the word, you just need one word. How beautiful. Listen, we have a, about a minute. And I'd like to, uh, uh, if you don't mind, I want you to pray for the audience that's watching in English. And Pastor Garza, I want you to pray in Spanish. Amen. How about that? Amen. Go ahead and, uh, and uh, talk to them and just pray for, Father, for the people that are watching. Please. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the audience that is taking the time to listen to this word. We understand that your word is a transformational word. Your word does miracles and wonders. All we need from you is one word. One word will change our situation. One word will change our life. One word will change our children, our matrimony. And right now we are so grateful that this word is in the midst of us and you're doing tremendous change in our lives. Padre, yo declaro en este momento en el nombre de Jesús que toda persona que está en este momento pasando un tiempo difícil recibe tu presencia poderosa. Yo declaro ahora que tú vas a bendecir cada vida en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén y amén. Wow, what a time we had. I know you've been blessed. And I want you to uh, take a note. If you live in the Kissim area, go visit their church anywhere in Orlando and the Lord is going to transform your life. God bless you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Be blessed. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.